Hi, and welcome to the 19th section of the Swift UI course. Today, we're going to learn how to create a form, how to work with various controls, such as the stepper, the picker, the date picker, the uh, text field, and then we're gonna save that data and show that in a dialog. First of all, let's open the navigator, and then here, right after update store, I'm going to right click, new file, Swift UI view, we're gonna name that settings and then create. I'm going to hide the navigator and resume. And now I can start building my settings. So oftentimes in your app, you're gonna need a page where people can configure their settings such as notifications, their email address, or even just create a login page. In this case, we're going to use their default look, which is using the navigation view. And what is great about that is that it translates beautifully into different platforms such as the iPad, the Mac, and so on. So if you don't need a page that is very custom in terms of design, which probably about 60 to 80% of your app doesn't need to be completely custom, then you should definitely use the navigation view or the form and the controls such as the pickers and stuff like that. Okay, so let's start by deleting this. Then we're gonna type navigation view curly braces. Then we're gonna put the form. So form curly braces. And this is where we're gonna put our controls. This is almost the equivalent of list, except when you're supposed to submit the data, then you should use the form. So we're gonna start with a toggle and it's simply gonna be toggle from the views and we have this by default. Now, instead of using the constant, which means that it's not gonna change at all, we're gonna use the state so that we can switch back and forth between true or false. First of all, let's name this receive notification. And then we're gonna set the state for the toggle. So add state, var receive, and by default, let's say it's going to be false. And then now we can just bind this to the toggle value right here. So we're gonna put dollar sign receive. Notice that we have the dollar sign because using a form control, it needs to communicate back and forth and update that value. So I'm gonna resume this and you can see by default it's off. So let me play this and then I can switch back and forth. Great. So our first item in our form works. Now we can use the form to set the large title. So right after form, I'm gonna put dot navigation bar title, the second option right here. And I'm gonna put the title to settings. This is going to allow me to have this large title that also transition to the navigation bar. Next, let's do the stepper, so stepper. Again, very, very simple. We have a value and then the range of number. For the title, let's set uh, a maximum of notifications per week, since we don't wanna spam our users. And then for the constant, we're gonna set a state. So state var number is equal to one by default. And in here, I'm going to replace this by dollar sign number. If you resume this, you can play with the stepper, but you notice that nothing is changing. That's because we are not really showing the number anywhere, so we can do that by, let's say, putting the number right here inside the text. In order to do that in Swift, we're gonna have to do backslash parentheses, and then we can put the value called number. So now when I do plus, then the number is reflecting right away. I can even do something pretty cool to fix the English right here by replacing the S only when the number is above one. So I'm going to replace the S by backslash parentheses. And then I'm gonna ask, is the number greater than one? If so, question mark. If so, then put S else with nothing. So you're gonna see here that one notification is not gonna show the S, but two notification is gonna show the S and plus. Awesome. For this value, let's just 
double click it and move on to the next control. Let's do the picker now. Let's summon the picker from the views. And here we have some really nice defaults. Again, the value, the label, and then each of the selections. For the label, let's just double click it and change the text. Let's say favorite course. And each of these values is going to have its own title. So the first one I'm going to put Swift UI and then React. Now, if you don't set the value, it's going to stick to Swift UI and that's the problem. So we're going to have to set the state yet again. So state var selection is equal to one by default. And then we're going to connect that using dollar sign selection. And now it's going to allow me to switch between Swift UI and React. Notice that we have a tag and this number is what allows the selection, which is a number, to know which number goes with what value. So if you add more selections, make sure to have the tag number as well. All right, so let's deal with the date now. So we're gonna bring date and make sure to have a state value, otherwise it's not gonna change it. So state var date is equal to and then we're going to use the date parentheses to have a default date. Let's replace the date using dollar sign date. And then make sure that we have also a label on the left. So we can just put parentheses and put text. I'm just going to put date. Resume this. And now we have the title and then we have the date which is able to change. The last thing I want to show you today is the text field, which is really, really important for setting a login form or forgot password, for example. So I'm going to bring a text field and then we have this by default. Before moving on, I'm going to set the state first. So state var email is equal to nothing. For the text field, I want to put a placeholder and then I want to put the state value. So we're going to start with a placeholder. So I'm going to replace this by double quotes and I'm going to put your email comma. Then I'm going to set the text parameter using my dollar sign email. By doing command B, it's going to stop complaining for the warning and I can resume and see that I have some nice placeholder text. Now, the thing is, you cannot type inside the Swift UI preview, but it's going to work in your iOS simulator. The other thing is I can set the styling for this text field. So I'm going to put text field style and set that to rounded border. So now I have this nice rounded border. Then I can put a section title because right now we just have the text field, but there's no title anywhere. Usually you want to group your controls using a section. So I'm going to command click this. Let's say embed in H tag for now. And uh, instead of using a H tag, I'm going to type section. The section has a header value. So I'm going to put header column and I'm going to put a text email. A section is supposed to be dividing your layout per groups of controls. But in this uh, beta 3, it's not working. So please keep that in mind in the future. All right, so let's do a submit button. So I'm going to put a button and you're familiar with this one. It's going to be submit. And then for the action, if you remember, we're simply going to toggle between true or false. Let me set up the state var submit is equal to false by default. And then for the action, inside the curly braces, we're going to put submit dot toggle. Here is going to complain that we don't have the self. Now, usually when you're inside a function that is not at the root level, you're going to have to fix it by adding the self. And this is an error that is easy to fix because Xcode is going to give you the right suggestion. Clicking on the submit button 
is not going to do anything visually. It's only going to toggle the submit value between true and false. We're going to use that value though to show an alert dialog. And this thing is simply a modifier. It's called a presentation. So dot presentation inside the parentheses, I'm going to use the dollar sign submit. So true or false comma, and then alert colon curly braces. Now this is going to use the submit value to present or not to present the alert. And inside the curly braces, I'm going to put alert parentheses. And here we can use a bunch of parameters such as a title message and buttons. Let's start with the first one to make it simple. The first one is just a title and I'm going to use the text parentheses quotes put thanks. If you resume this and you click on submit, it's going to create your alert without any message. Let's add a message. So right after text comma type message and again use another text. Then we can just use one of the values from our form such as the toggle, the number of notifications, the favorite course, the email and so on. Here we're just going to use email column backslash parentheses. I'm going to put email. We can't test the email here. So we're going to go to the tab bar dot Swift file. And then here we're going to connect instead of the update list to settings. And let's change the text to settings. Now we can run the app in the iOS simulator. You're going to see that we have the tab for settings. And you see that it's properly grouped using the section. So we have the email with a title. We have the submit button that is separate. And then here we can start typing the email, email at gmail.com. And if I click on submit, it's going to show the value right here. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Hopefully you had a lot of fun creating your own form. As a little homework, I would definitely suggest to try to put all the other data inside uh, this text right here. In the next session, I want to show you how to do some really cool scroll animation using the scroll position and apply some 3D transformation at the same time. So I'll see you then.